Joining us now to talk more about what's happening in the Riau Islands and, and that process of getting back and forth is Mike Schubert, the president, director, and co-founder of Tulunas Resorts. Of course, Tulunas Resorts uh, located there in the Riau Islands, um, overwater bungalows, lots of school trips go there, families go there. Um, it is a, a fantastic getaway for families. Mike, it is so great to have you back on the show. Welcome. Well, thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Neil. And, and congratulations to you, Neil. Uh, you definitely uh, are worthy of this nomination. Thank wow. you, Mike. And just to bring it full circle, I did writing workshops with the Singapore American School at Toluna Resorts. It's one of the That's best right. writing <laughs> workshops I have ever done. That's right. That's right. Well, We're both uh, uh, welcome guests. You guys are, are some of our favorite guests that we've had out at Toluna. Well, thank you, and and my family loves going. We've been there several times now over the years, and um, and and much has to do with your support of organizations here in Singapore as well, including the American Association of Singapore and others. And uh, and so it 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 you know there's give and take there, and and we do appreciate that. And, and Mike, let's let's bring it back though to, uh, you know the the relatively recent announcements about more open travel between Singapore and the Riau Islands. What what is your take? And I know you're in Singapore right now, headed back to the Riaus this afternoon. Um, but what is your take on the current sort of level of ease of getting back and forth? Yeah, we're excited because uh, we do feel that uh, it's been a long road coming, uh, two plus years before we can truly welcome guests back into Tulunas and the Riau Islands uh, from Singapore. Uh, the key things that I think happened this week that are good news. Um, now there's a list of 43 countries, passport holder, holders from 43 countries can now enter Batam, Bintan with, with a visa on arrival. Um, so that is ba good news. The other thing that you're required is to be fully vaccinated, which is defined as two shots. And then the third thing is you need a pre-departure PCR. So you get your nose swab. I did it this uh, yesterday morning. Um, I'm fully vaccinated and I can just arrive into Batam, they'll check our documents and then, you know, your tour travel agent, your hotel resort can pick you up and take you from there. So it's really, it, it's, I don't want to say it's back to the way it used to be, but it's really simple. It's just uh, a pre-departure and be fully vaccinated. So we're excited to welcome a lot of people back. Yeah. Well, that's great news, Mike. And let's just focus on that itself, your journey to and from Singapore, because I think that's very, very relevant and interesting to our listeners because, you know, regulars to Batam and Bintan will say, I'm only going for the long weekend. How long is that journey actually going to take? Because that will have an impact on people's decision making. So how long was your journey? You know, how long was the process of being tested and so forth? Um, when I came here about a week ago from Batam, it, all I needed was an ART test to get into Singapore. Um, and I arrived at the ferry terminal a little earlier because I didn't know uh, if it was going to be tedious, but it was very fast. And so I, I waited around the ferry terminal a little longer than normal. Normally, I would arrive an hour ahead of time. I arrived two hours ahead of time, but that's okay. I got on my ferry. It was a quick um, 40 minutes. Right now, the only ferry terminal that is operating in Singapore is Panamera. Uh, there is conversations about harbor front being open, but right now, uh, Tanamera is the place where you leave and uh, return. So that's important for people to realize. But I, I know all the different hotels, resorts like ourselves, we're figuring out, we'll get you there, we'll pick you up there, um, mm. and we'll get you to our journey. But uh, getting mm. into Singapore, it was slick. All I did was the automatic passport into the machine you know, scan the face and walk through. I didn't have to talk to anyone. It was, it was literally, nice. slick. they didn't even check my documents because you preload it uh, online. You preload all your documents, your vaccinations, things like that. Yeah, we're, right. talking with, we're talking with Mike Schubert, the president, director, co-founder of Tolunas Resorts uh, in the Riau Islands. And Mike, one of the, I think one of the hallmarks, uh, as I recall, of going to Tolunas was the amazing staff that you had there. Of course, Brett, uh, Brett Husky is on, on site. And uh, so many of the, the local staff that you have there were just so welcoming and, and good at what they're doing. How has the pandemic 
um, impacted you and your staff? Did you have to let them go? Are they still around? What What is going to be the experience now as people start coming back to Tulunas? Yeah, as many companies face the pandemic and the unknown, we all had to make uh, decisions. And for us, it was important for us to ground all our decisions on our values. And we value the community that we've established at Tulunas. And so we just kind of brought all the staff together and we talked about it and we decided we weren't going to let anyone go that was a permanent um, staff member uh, but we did say how can we tighten our belts um, and so they voluntarily took some pay cuts um, and you know it was enough they said we can still live on with this pay cut um, and they've stayed with us and uh, so we're really excited. Now, some have found other opportunities over the last two years. Sure. Um, but if you think about it from a purely business, it's been very tough. But in terms of um, the team and where we're at, we're stronger now, I feel. We, we've put a lot of work into our facilities. Our staff are there. Of course, we're going to have to ramp up a little bit as the guests return. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a lot of familiar faces uh, when you come back. Yeah. And that's wonderful because Toluna's work with the indigenous communities is well known. I know your regeneration projects very well. I think it's great. The work you've done in reforestation around the Riau Islands is fantastic. So I'm very pleased to hear that about the staff. Was, was it possible during that period, uh, Mike, to have local visitors? Uh, was that something that helped to keep you going? We had, uh, yes, we were able to have some um, local visitors. It, it, uh, it was great for training and development, um, but it, it mm. couldn't cover, let's say, all the expenses. But we were pleased uh, to be able to extend that to a number of people in the surrounding. And so we had government officials. We had local people that normally probably couldn't have uh, enjoyed Tulunas were able to come. Yeah, uh, fantastic story. Uh, so where, where are you at right now, Mike? Are, are guests already back in the resort, or are they just going to start coming? Where are you at in terms of occupancy and, and the two resorts you have? You have the, the one that's uh, the private resort and then the one that is the, the regular one. Yeah, so the private island is open and ready for people to start booking. You can go on to our website, tolunasresorts.com, and book directly, or you can email us. Um, we are open. Easter weekend is fully booked right now, but kind of on the other side, you can start doing that. And uh, the Labadon or the Edel Petri holiday is starting to book up, but there, my staff told me there are still a few rooms available. So we're starting with the private island, and June 1, we're going to be opening up the beach resort. Again, we think it'll be good for all of us if we just kind of focus and build uh, back together. Yeah. Oh, that's great news, uh, Mike. And and what's your hope in terms of getting back to normal pre-COVID levels? Do you have any predictions on how long that might take for you? I'm optimistic. So I'm, I'm hoping that by July um, we will be back to normal in terms of uh, our occupancy. To be honest, you know, Neil, with schools, um, we don't know when schools and larger groups like church retreats will begin to travel. Um, so mm -hmm. we're, we're in conversations with them. Um, we do, actually, we do have a, a, a school from Indonesia coming from Jakarta uh, the end of May. Um, so there's already some interest, but that's uh, domestic. Um, so we're, we're excited, uh, but it's a journey for all of us. Yeah, Great. so back to normal by July, Glenn. That's when we'll do our live show yeah. from Toluna Resort. I think we should do the live show right. from there, don't you think, Brett? Or, or, or uh, uh, Mike, don't you think that'd yeah. be fun? That would be great. We'd love to have you. <laughs> but on a, I mean, a serious note, after July, looking further ahead, what are the long-term plans for Tolunas? Yeah, great question. So we've already, uh, right before COVID uh, started, we secured another island in uh, the Belitung area, which is about halfway between Singapore and Jakarta. It's a beautiful part of Indonesia. Wow. And um, we're finishing up our design process, the permit permitting process, and we're looking forward to breaking ground this year. Uh, that is another goal. So that's going to be an, another part of our, our story. Uh, another chapter that will be unfolding, and we're looking forward to inviting a lot of people there as well. 
Wonderful. Oh, Mike, Wonderful. that's amazing. Uh, Mike, we're going to leave it there. I know you've got to run off and get your uh, get to your ferry, but uh, we, we do appreciate you coming on. Mike Schubert, the president, director, co-founder of Talunas Resorts. If you want to put the uh, Tulun- any other Talunas information in the chat on our uh, Money FM Facebook page, you're welcome to do that. And great, to, great to see you again, and all the best. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Take care. No.